Hey, what's up guys, another video here. So today I want to talk about why you are poor. So there's three aspects of being poor. So number one is debt. So you either have student loan debt or a combination of that and consumer debt. So student loan debt and consumer debt. So if you do have some kind of high interest debt, what's gonna happen is you're gonna accrue interest on it. So assuming you're paying the minimum payments, you're just gonna keep accruing interest. Assuming it's a variable rate or more fortunately if you have a fixed rate, loan so you really want to avoid having debt because that's going to accrue more interest over time assuming you're making minimum payments so for example if you do have to take on debt such as student loan debt what's going to happen is you should probably go for the more cost effective options such as in-state school if you're in the United States and maybe if in Europe or Asia you have some kind of state sponsored university or college you probably want to go that route but in the United States at least, if you do in-state versus out-of-state, it doesn't really make a huge difference in your job prospects, so just keep that in mind. It may make a slight difference if you're in, for example, an Ivy League school where you may have certain connections or legacy connections, but in actuality, it's not gonna make a huge difference if you go from state to state as far as the university is concerned. And in my case, I definitely didn't benefit from going to an out-of-state school. So that was kind of a mistake on my part, but you know, fortunately it worked out for me. I'm doing very well financially, but my advice to you is to go to an in-state school and go with a program that's cost effective and will make you money in your career or your profession. So never go to a university where the major you're studying is unjustified and won't give you a guaranteed high income stream once you leave the school. So you may not enjoy what you're studying, but keep in mind that you have to pay off the student loan debt and you have to secure a career or an income that will justify the amount you spend for the school. And again, for consumer debt, you don't wanna be buying stupid things such as luxury goods or things that will depreciate in value like I've covered many times before. So if you let that accrue and you, if your expenses are out of control month to month to month, it's gonna keep accruing interest and it's gonna increase your debt load. So you really want to avoid that. So avoid debt at all costs if you can and if you do have to encounter debt make sure it's justified and it's minimized to the extent that you can minimize it so number two is the anchors with continual payments so this will include children a wife expensive cars an excessive home excessive habits and vacations so you know this is quite obvious but if you if your goal is to become a millionaire or multimillionaire having a children and especially a wife that doesn't work is really gonna mess up your plans. So if you are trying to build a life and you're trying to start building your life at 20 or 22 and you're already saddled with a marriage and children, it's gonna greatly, it's gonna you know, essentially destroy your chances of becoming a millionaire or multimillionaire fairly young. You may become a millionaire or multimillionaire later on in life, but this is greatly gonna slow your progress. So that's why it's better if you do want to marry, if you really, really want to marry and have children to do it later in life and to have a younger spouse. So in that way, the funds that you've built up to that point, it will grow you know, much, much easier from that point because you have a lot of capital built up and you already have your investments going. But especially if your wife doesn't work and she's taking care of the children and you may have to pay for daycare and all the expense related with children is really going to screw you up and obviously you know as you go through your life you may go through cars and they may, may become more expensive more expensive as time goes on so keep in mind that includes maintenance tires insurance uh, gasoline of course so that's all going to add up over time and it's really going to detract from your finances so that's why an expensive car is an anchor in fact any car is an anchor but you do need to commute to it if you're not in a city environment from A to, A to B, spots A to B, but if you minimize it, get a fairly inexpensive car and you don't make car payments on it, you pay for it in cash and you use it over a long period of time, a decade plus, then uh, that's an anchor that you can afford and it won't hurt you too badly in the long run. And again, with a home, you know, don't, definitely don't get a home with excessive bedrooms because uh, more likely, when the property is larger, you're going to be paying more and more property tax, more maintenance, more utilities, and so forth. So that is a definite anchor in you. You may build some home equity if the home value goes much higher in value over time. But again, the amount that you put into it may offset that 
home equity that you build in the home. So definitely don't buy an excessive home if you can't help it. And excessive habits, you may have, for example, a motorcycle habit or you may have a habit of going to a you know, very expensive annual vacation every year. That's really going to kill your finances and that's an anchor in the sense that you do it. It's a recurring cost year to year. So children, wife, expensive cars, an excessive home, excessive habits and vacations, it's really going to uh, kill you and it's going to make you stay poor. So number three is quite obvious, but the lack of investing and the lack of income is really going to make you poor, obviously. So if you don't have a lot of cash inflow coming in and you have an equal or greater amount of cash flow going out, then of course it's going to make you poor. You'll never get ahead. And if you keep all your money in cash, obviously that's going to be very detrimental. Number one, it's going to be eaten away by inflation, like I've said many times before. And it's not going to grow, obviously, because you're retaining it in cash. So that's a huge, huge mistake. And I noticed that a lot of young people that I've talked to, they do have this mistake. They may have a pretty decent income, but they're not investing. They're keeping all the money in cash. So even if they get to the point of 30, 40, and they retain all their money in cash, what's going to happen is they will never be able to grow it. And it's very, very hard to save up to millions in cash because it's extremely hard to save that much money. So just to put it in perspective, if you want to save a million in cash, you'll have to save $20,000 cash for 50 consecutive years. So, you know, that is possible, I should say, but that's not the best way to approach uh, try to become a millionaire or multimillionaire. So just to recap here, the three aspects of why you're poor. Number one is debt. So this debt can include student loan debt and consumer debt. Number two is anchors with continual payments, children, wife, expensive cars, an excessive home, excessive habits and vacations. And number three is the lack of investing and the lack of income. So hopefully, guys, uh, this was a little helpful and stay tuned for the next video.